the video. Hi, I'm Dexter Britton. Thanks for watching Music News. Subscribe down here. Okay, Dexter Britton, it's a pleasure to meet you. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good stuff. Um, I was listening to your latest album, Impression. It's very moving. Um, when you started working on it, what were you looking to achieve exactly? Well, as with all my works, I tried to encompass some sort of theme. And the theme for this one was awe, so something nature inspired. And so when I was wake, uh, working on the tracks, I thought, well, what would I feel when I'm crossing a finish line or climbing a mountain, that type of thing. So that was really the whole impression of impression. <laughs> yeah, no, great. When you approach a new composition, do you start from a particular human emotion that, sort of, that you felt and then translate that to music? It is. I'm definitely an emotional composer. So I'll sit down and I'll start playing something, usually on a piano, and that will kind of direct the rest of the track. It's all based on whatever I'm feeling, but with the album and the idea of the album in the back of my head at that time. All as a sort of one big sort of landscape, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, Impression is the first of two recording projects for, for this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the second's going to be recorded with a full orchestra. What's mm -hmm. your intention and your goal there? <laughs> well, it'll be my first time working with an orchestra because I can't actually read or write music. It's going to be yeah. quite the challenge. But I thought it was about time that I, I worked with real composers and, uh, sorry, I worked with real arrangers and, word slipped me. Um, <laughs> 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 not the, um, not the uh, what's it called, the sorry, conductors. The conductors, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not educated in music, <laughs> could you tell? <laughs> yeah, it was about time that I worked with um, conductors and arrangers to make real music with real orchestra, where it would have a better sound and really raise me to the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the pieces that the orchestra are going to play, how, how, how are they going to be written? It would all be written on computer, just like everything that I do now is. Um, and then I'll get an arranger to make it legible to musicians. Great, and how many, how many piece orchestra will it be? Um, it'll be a full orchestra. Um, I'm trying to make it as big and as, as impressive as it can be. But I haven't started writing it yet, so it depends on what the actual track compositions are. Usually I work mostly with strings and a few brass instruments. So I'm going to try and incorporate more uh, woodwind. Try and make it a proper classical piece rather than soundtrack style as I've been doing. Excellent, where's it going to be recorded? Um, we don't know yet. At the moment, it will probably be somewhere Eastern Europe, um, with maybe the Prague Philharmonic, something like that. And will be released this year? Hopefully. Well, well, that's quite yeah. a lot of work. You've got your work cut out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like to work quick. Yeah, I know. I don't like to sit with too much time on my hands. So. But has the whole uh, piece album been written already? No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> But you've also recorded compositions for NASA, O2, Kellogg's, Nike, Ralph Lauren, GoPro, Bulgari. How do these differ from your film-based work or album compositions? Um, it's usually a lot quicker. People want to turn around in a matter of days, whereas when I do an album I have a couple of weeks right. or longer. I set myself my own deadlines, so as I said, I try to make it quick when I do an album. But when you're doing commercial work, they want it a lot quicker. But the principle's pretty much the same. You still have to approach it from some sort of human emotion and whatever the project's gonna want to portray, just as you would with another track that's not for anything in particular. Yeah, yeah. How did you first get involved in composing for, for TV, Phil? Well, it was kind of luck and perseverance. I tried really hard for years to try and be a pop producer. So I was making loads of electronic music from when I was about 15 and then after a little while, I realized that I'm not very good at that. So I went back to doing classical music, which has always been my forte. When I was improvising on piano as a kid, it was always soundtrack style. Yeah, yeah. So I released a load of stuff under Creative Commons, and that got picked up by the Free Music Archive. And from there, I had a couple of hundred thousand downloads. And then from then, business came in. So it was right. quite fluid, yeah, pretty yeah. quick. I mean, soundtracks, you know, require a real connection and engagement with the listener. What's your secret to getting that, that right? <laughs> I think the simplest response is that I'm an emotional person. Like, I'll watch all sorts of films and I'll always end up crying. And so I, I get really involved in everything. And I think it's that which comes across. Yeah, no, it's 
And um, with no formal training, as you said, how did you gain the skills that are necessary? Dad, well, my mum likes to take credit for this because <laughs> my older brother is very sporty, so she wanted a musical son. So she says that she played me music when I was growing up and they always bought me musical instruments as toys and as gifts. So I've just played for years and just practiced. It's just making it up as you go along. But it's right. worked in the end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you allow a lot of your music to be downloaded for free and used under Creative Commons license. Is that approach sort of working for you? Yeah, absolutely. If it wasn't for the Creative Commons, then I wouldn't be standing here now. The most of my work on YouTube, for instance, almost 30,000 uses are through Creative Commons. And it's from that which other people discover me and that my fan base grows and my commercial clientele grows. Yeah, no, no, it's an absolute, it's a great idea, good concept. And um, you seem to have a lot in common with, with Hans Zimmer, Zimmer himself. <laughs> is, is he a particular inspiration? <laughs> he has been, yeah, absolutely. His music is phenomenal and he's one of the greatest soundtrack composers of our time. So how could you not have him as an inspiration? <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly. I mean, we saw Ennio Morricone a couple of months back. He's yeah. truly outstanding as well, more orchestral. Yeah. Seeing it, could he be an inspiration for the, for the second work? Yes, absolutely. I used to try to emulate some of his pieces a couple of years ago, just to try and get the sound. But yeah, it's definitely a route that I'm heading towards. Yeah, yeah, the 100-piece orchestra on stage, 150 in the choir. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was on a massive scale. Yeah, did. that's the dream. Amazing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> few years time. <laughs> um, are there any other mainstream artists that you take inspiration from? Well I spend most of my time listening to pop music. My most played song is Miley Cyrus, Time of Our Lives. Really? <laughs> which I shouldn't really admit but I think pop music is always so perfectly created and well presented. I don't see there's anything wrong with it. No, no, absolutely. And so whilst it's looked down on as a whole like art form, it's where I've where I started off trying to make music for pop so if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't have been getting so deeply into the classical music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what advice would you have to, to other young sort of artists that want to sort of get into this side of the business? Well, I think without any training and without any guidance for the first five, six years of my time doing it, it's just to keep going, to not give up. If you think you're good enough, then someone else might as well. <laughs> Great. Good advice. And um, what other projects have uh, Dexter Britain got in the pipeline? Well, I've just finished a film score. Um, it's called Till We Meet Again. And it should be coming out at the end of this year, if not the beginning of next year. It's a great international indie project. So it's shot in Thailand, written by a Swede living in New York. And then, of course, me as a British composer. So it should be well received, hopefully at some of the festivals later in the year. Excellent. Sounds good. Well, thanks a lot for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank and um, for somebody that's um, sort of just getting into Dexter Britain, what, what sort of three compositions would you say you'd pick out? These three sort of sum me up. Well, the Time to Run finale, of course, that is my most popular piece. Um, Light of Life, and then Everything You Know from the new album. Fantastic. You answered that very quickly. <laughs> Not many people do. <laughs> um, thanks a lot for your time. As I said, anything else to say to music news watchers? No, just thank you very much. Great stuff, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.